Golf originated from a game played on the eastern coast of Scotland, but it is here in Augusta where it made history and it still does. Lots of tradition, remarkable players and unforgettable tournaments make this sport unique and loved by so many. A local Arthur gathered stories of legendary caddies 20 years ago and 20 years later. He thought he, stories needed to have a little life, a little extra life, and that's how he wrote another book. Ward Clayton joins us here in the Mix Studios to tell us more about the legendary caddies of Augusta National. And Ward, thank you for joining us. Thank oh, you. thanks for inviting special, me. I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, thank special you. guest here to the yeah, Mix. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> uh, and you also brought a little uh, accoutrement. Yeah, this, say. this is a caddy suit, which everybody's familiar with the green jacket. This is the uh, is Carl Jackson, who's won two Masters. He, he calls this the tuxedo of caddy uniforms. So. This is what you need to get mm. to the green jacket. I know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Let's show the back. How yep. cool is that? Yep. <laughs> yes, yes. So th those, those names on the back are Velcroed on there mm. so they can interchange names and the numbers the same way. I don't have the Augusta National logo. Fred Deitch, who runs International Uniform in downtown Augusta, used to manufacture these for years and years for Augusta National. Wow. So. Wow, Very so there's cool. a piece of history right there for yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, and a lot of history in this book, too. What inspired you to write Men on the Bag uh, and now the legendary caddies of Augusta National? Um, when I was a sports editor of the Augusta Chronicle from 91 till 2000, we wrote so many historic pieces about the Masters. And we'd always run into occasional mentions of the caddy, but it was always generally there's just their nickname. Mm -hmm. Iron Man, Cemetery, Stovepipe all these names like this, and I was curious as to what their real names were and what their backstories were. So that developed a storyline. And then 25 years ago, Willie Peterson's daughter, Vanessa Peterson Fox, called us at the Chronicle and said, my dad just died in New York. Willie caddy for Nicholas, five of his master's wins. And so that set the storyline going forward about trying to do an Ancestry.com deep dive into trying to figure out who was still alive, family members, friends, et cetera. A caddy tree. Wow. Yeah. yeah, lots of his, his stories. And, and obviously, you did a lot of research um, to write this book. So, what was the process like? It, it was very um, time consuming, took about four years, just because you know, you got to dig deep and find who's still alive and if, 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 if there's family members that you can reach out to. Um, additionally, caddies are great for being great resources in golf. Mm -hmm. They can tell you what's going on behind the scenes, but also you have to cut through some of the lines they give you and see what's true and what's not. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a lot of detail to deal with in doing that. So and, and there's probably more stories out there we haven't unearthed, but still it, it's, there's a lot of different caddies who have had a great impact on the tournament. Uh, speaking of some of those stories, and of course many of those are in the books here, um, share with us one of your one of the stories that stands out for you. Um, I'll go with humor here. Okay. 19, That's probably good. Ni <laughs> ni 1971, Charlie Cootie won the Masters. He was a pretty much of a journeyman player. He had a caddy named Cricket because he was really tall and lean and resembled a cricket. So on, he was leading on Saturday on the 8th fairway. He looks at Charlie Cootie and says, uh, Mr. Cootie, what time does television come on this afternoon? Well, why are you worried about that? Says, well, um, you know, I drive a bus in Atlanta, and I told my boss I was going to visit my sick grandmother in Houston, and I didn't think you were going to play this well this week. <laughs> and so he was humored at the outset, but when TV came on on Saturday and Sunday on the back nine, Cricket had taken the towel off the golf bag, taken his cap off, put the towel over his head, and put the hat on, and he was trying to hide from the cameras. And Charlie Cooter to this day says, going around the back nine, he wasn't worried about Nicholas or Miller. He was so humored with his caddy wearing a towel over his head. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, did he keep the job? <laughs> he did. Okay, he did. Okay. Did. All right. Here's a happy ending after all. Okay. That's a good one. That's good. And uh, you said that the public golf is certain to get better by 2025 when they patch the Augusta Golf Course. Uh, First Tee and Augusta Tech, in partnership with Augusta National, brings a new look to that track. So, what is the future of the golf here in Augusta like, in your opinion? Well, the, the Augusta Municipal Course, um, which is affectionately called the Patch. Mm -hmm. Um, has always been a place that attracted a lot of daily golfers, public golfers. But it's always been rough around the edges. So Augusta National last year announced they're partnering with Augusta Tech and the first tee, which is right beside it, and they're going to start that in 2025. I think we'll learn more 
as tournament week comes up about what some dates are and specifically what's going to happen. But I don't think the price point on that golf course will change drastically. But the golf course is probably going to be a, a great thing for a public-private partnership in municipalities around the country. You know, and Augusta will be a great example of that. Sure. Uh, yeah. All of this information and so much more. And again, the books. Uh, I, I know you were at the uh, Book Tavern yesterday evening doing right. a mm -hmm. signing for that. Where can people get more information for your books and, and how to grab them? Um, in our world, when we're so used to ordering things online, right. uh, I'm just telling people to go to Blair Publish, Blair, BlairPub.com. It's not a place you go have a cold beer. Oh, okay. Well, B, then that B, case. Sorry. <laughs> B-L-A-I-R-P-U-B.com. And you can order the book there. Or go to your local... Um, bookstore, sort of like the Book Tavern in downtown Augusta. Uh, and tonight I'm going to be at the uh, Lucy Laney House where they're doing the, the, the Men on the Back play, which you're getting local actors to portray some of the caddies. I've not been to it, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we have heard quite a bit about it, so yeah. tell Corey that we said hi exactly. there. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Warren, thank you so much thank for spending you. some time with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good week.